So that, to tell you the context of where my life has gone, is I decided simply that, okay, I would take Jesus up on this. Uh, I would do whatever it took. I would leave no stone unquestioned. I would go as deep as I had to go into my mind. I felt that there was something fishy about this world. I couldn't really put my finger on it, but I knew that I would something get to There's something fishy going on here, and I, uh, it's not uh, heaven, the way I'm looking at it. And, and I also, from reading the Bible, I mean, to be up on a cross and to say things like, forgive them for they know not what they, what they do after somebody's driven spikes uh, into your, your arms and, and legs. I thought, well, he must be seeing a very different world uh, to honestly say, forgive them for they know not what they do, from that position. And I thought, if he's like the way shower that's going before me, and he's, he's left a little bit of a road map through the Gospels and then through the a Course in Miracles, he's left a very clear, detailed uh, road map and simply said, follow it. Uh, here it is. I offer you uh, the way out of the escape from illusions, the escape out of attack thoughts, follow it. I said, it's in English, it's not in Latin or Greek, you don't even have to translate it. Uh, it's got workbook lessons, uh, it's a very practical course, it's got, you know, it's beautiful even, it's got Shakespearean blank verse. I mean, I thought, I got no excuse, really no excuse at all now. So, in answer to your question, I simply followed it. And now I, I see the world differently. Not from a state of denial, like an ostrich kind of burying the head in the sand. I don't want to see that war, so I'm not going to look at it. You know, I don't want to see that war, so I'm not going to turn the TV on. To uh, actually having a transformation of consciousness where you see with the Holy Spirit. You see the blessing in all things. You see the good in all things. You see that all things work together for good. Uh, all that's not love is a call for love. Yeah, all that's not love is just a call for love. And since you have all this love to give away, you're happy to uh, let it shine in whatever situation, whether it's in Argentina or Europe or uh, anywhere, any place you go, you feel like you want to be a beacon of light. You want to let this love and this light pour through you to convince yourself mm -hmm. that you are that light, that it's not apart from you. You are that light. So it's good news, like the gospel said, it's really, really good news. And as I was sharing with you a while ago, it all begins with a simple, simple choice. To go for the happiness, a simple choice. <laughs> go for the happiness and not see the misery, not see the war. And be I, I guess mind. I'm just confused. I'm thinking about the fact that or I, I teach in a very impoverished community, um, abuse coming to school through the eyes of the children, and I can't deny that that's happening. I have to be there and help them. That's what I feel that I'm here for. I mean, to say that the war, that, that the war is there, and I'm going to use the war of poverty, because that's what I live daily in my job, I can't be in denial of that, that I don't have to do anything that's a perception problem on my point when I have these children with bruises and crying and and sadness. I don't, I don't understand your answer to now. Yeah. Well, we'll go into it deeper. That's why we have two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. <laughs> because it's not a, something that you necessarily, I mean, with willingness it can be grasped in an instant, but actually it, it seems to take time to open your mind to this stuff. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of like, I always use an example of Mother Teresa. I mean, Mother Teresa was just reached a point in her life where she wanted to, to be of service to the poorest of the poor, to help mm -hmm be a shining light in this world. And initially, you know, uh, she started picking people off the street. That's the first thing that came to her, you know. Uh, whether they were poor and they needed nourishment or they were, you know, had uh, disease or whatever the sickness was, just to nurture and love them. Mm -hmm. And initially, uh, in terms of awakening, you know, you, you, ha you have this altruistic kind of feeling inside of you that you want to help. Uh, mm -hmm. And people, like, I certainly got into the helping professions myself as well. Um, I, I got into um, vocational rehabilitation, um, worked at uh, Goodwill, uh, worked with people that were blind and deaf, as well as uh, mental retardation, schizophrenia, personality disorder, uh, worked with 
for people, uh, just out of a desire to be helpful. That's where it starts. Uh, because you have it inside you wanting to help. And just like Mother Teresa uh, started off with wanting to be helpful, uh, she had a very deep faith that she really wanted to learn to, to live and to experience the Christ, experience Jesus fully. She would even tell her nuns, you know, that's what it's really about. We may be pouring cups of water for people and giving them food and doing this to their wounds, you know, trying to help them with their wounds, but really what this is about is about seeing the Christ in everyone we meet, to see no differences. Uh, being Jesus' arms and legs and mouths on this earth, you know, the love of unconditional love. And so it starts there. It starts with where, where you perceive yourself. Your uh, Holy Spirit has to work with the mind where it believes it's at. And if you believe in this world, you do believe in the things of this world. The poverty, the abuse, the neglect, the things that go on. This is still an overall context of things, a misperception, in the sense that uh, God didn't create abuse. And God doesn't create poverty. God doesn't create uh, neglect and disease and strife and pain. Uh, they have to have a source, but God isn't the source of those things. So the, where the Course would take it is the Course, Jesus starts to say, you know, these are illusions, these are misperceptions. Because what comes from God is real. Because God is real. And love is real. And everything that proceeds from, from love is real. Just like in this world, you get apples from apple trees and oranges from orange trees, you know, you get love from love. You don't get sickness and disease and pestilence from love. It'd be a pretty cruel creator uh, if that's the way it was. And it would be a pretty, God couldn't be all-knowing and all-loving and all-powerful if, if such a mistake could occur that those attributes could be so twisted and distorted that they would turn into disease and hunger and pestilence and abuse. I mean, that would be a, I don't know about all loving, all powerful and all knowing. I went through those attributes a long time before I, I started to realize, I don't think that God has anything to do with this world at all. Uh, considering what God is, is, the traits and characteristics of God, this world isn't like God at all. So that's the first leap you have to start to open your mind to, is that the idea that in the Genesis story we were taught that God created the heavens and the earth. And then Jesus is coming along in his Course in Miracles and saying, well, God created the heavens. <laughs> and the ego, the distortion, the error, the belief in separation projected the earth, projected all of time and space. And people will say to me, well, wait a minute. This is a pretty vast uh, cosmos. The mountains and the valleys and everything, much less the clouds and then the stars and the galaxies and the black holes. That's a pretty, that's a pretty big uh, thing we got going on here for an illusion. And I said, well, that must be a testimony to how powerful the mind is uh, that's behind that whole thing. If the Big Bang was a big explosion based on separation, like a hurling apart, a dividing apart, then the mind that had the power to do such a thing, or to seem to do such a thing, must be pretty strong. Very powerful. <laughs> that's the Christ mind. Uh, that's the mind of Christ. That's a, a very, very, very powerful mind. So you can see that where this goes is that there's some very deep metaphysics behind all of this that I'm going to talk about today. And what's so loving and gentle about it is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, meets the mind exactly where it perceives itself to be. Uh, when I thought I was a boat rehab manager, I had to use what was available to, uh, not partially mistaken, but completely mistaken. 